He is known for being an influential 14th century French philosopher. He is recognized for his focus on logic and the works of Aristotle as a teacher at the University of Paris. He made significant contributions to the development of the concept of impetus, which played a crucial role in the history of medieval science. His name is Jean Buridan. In the bustling city of Paris in the 14th century, there lived a remarkable philosopher named Jean Buridan. A dedicated scholar, Buridan devoted his entire career to teaching in the Faculty of Arts at the prestigious University of Paris. His passion and expertise lay specifically in the fields of logic and the works of the great philosopher, Aristotle. With his teachings, Buridan aimed to expand the minds of his students and nurture a deep understanding of the complexities of the world. But Jean Buridan was not merely content with imparting knowledge. He had a deep curiosity and a thirst for exploration that led him to sow the seeds of a revolution that would alter the course of European thought. It was Buridan who developed the concept of impetus, a groundbreaking idea that marked the first step towards the modern concept of inertia. This revolutionary development in the realm of medieval science laid a crucial foundation for later scientific breakthroughs. Buridan's influence extended far beyond his teachings and theories. His name became synonymous with a captivating thought experiment known as, Buridan's Ass. Though not found in his extant writings, this ingenious experiment challenged conventional wisdom by exploring the nature of decision-making. The story goes that a donkey caught between two equally desirable sources of food would starve to death due to indecision. This engaging and thought-provoking narrative captured the imagination of philosophers and thinkers for generations to come. Jean Buridan's legacy as a philosopher, logician, and scientist continues to resonate through the annals of history. Through his dedication to unraveling the mysteries of the universe, he laid the groundwork for the Copernican Revolution that would follow. His profound contributions to medieval science continue to be celebrated, reminding us of the endless potential of the human mind to question, explore, and discover the truths that lie beneath the surface of the known world. Jean Buridan, a renowned philosopher of the 14th century, was not your typical scholar. Born before 1301, his exact birthplace remains a mystery, but it is believed he hailed from the Diocese of Arras in Picardy, France. Educated in Paris, he excelled in his studies at the College du Cardinal Le Moyne and later at the University of Paris, where he obtained his Master of Arts degree and the license to teach. However, unlike other philosophers of his time, Buridan opted to remain in the Faculty of Arts rather than pursuing the traditional paths of law, medicine, or theology. Buridan's decision to stay in the secular realm as a cleric was highly uncommon for a philosopher. In a papal letter from 1330, he was identified simply as, Clericus Atribitensis Diocoesis, Magister in Artibus. As university regulations restricted those without a background in theology from teaching or writing about the subject, Buridan did not delve into theological matters or engage in the commentary of Peter Lombard's sentences. Scholars have long speculated about Buridan's motivations for avoiding religious topics. It seems unlikely that his philosophical talents went unnoticed, and financial constraints could not have hindered his pursuit of theology, as he received several bursaries and stipends. Some suggest that Buridan deliberately chose to remain among the artists, seeing philosophy as a secular enterprise grounded in sensory and intellectual evidence, rather than relying on non-evident truths revealed through scripture and doctrine. Buridan's influence as a philosopher can be seen in his students. Notably, Bishop Albert of Saxony, himself renowned for his logical prowess, counted Buridan as one of his most notable teachers. However, the historical records of Buridan's life stop short in 1359 when he was mentioned as an adjudicator in a territorial dispute. It is assumed that he passed away some time after, as one of his benefices was awarded to another person in 1362. In 1473, the French King Louis XI issued an ordinance that banned the reading of Buridan's works, specifically targeting the nominalists. Despite this suppression, Buridan's philosophical ideas continue to resonate today, reminding us of the importance of critical thinking, intellectual independence, and exploring secular approaches to understanding the world around us. Jean Buridan, a renowned philosopher of the 14th century, was a figure shrouded in mystery and intrigue. Apocryphal stories whispered about his amorous affairs and thrilling adventures, adding to his glamorous reputation in the vibrant city of Paris. However, these tales remain unconfirmed, with many contradicting the known historical information of his life. One particular rumor suggests a tragic end for Buridan, claiming that the King of France had him put in a sack and thrown into the River Seine after his affair with the Queen was exposed. This dark tale echoes in the famous poem Ballade de Dames du Temps Jodies by François Villon. Yet, like the other stories, it lacks verifiable evidence and becomes another thread in the tapestry of Buridan's mystique. In contrast, another narrative suggests that Buridan was expelled from Paris due to his teachings as a nominalist philosopher. 
According to this account, he sought refuge in Vienna, where he would establish the prestigious University of Vienna. This version of events portrays Buridan as a courageous intellectual challenging the established order, willing to recast his life to continue his pursuit of knowledge. A more peculiar tale tells of Buridan's audacious act of hitting Pope Clement VI with a shoe. Though seemingly fantastical, this story adds to the enigma surrounding his persona and highlights the courage to challenge authority that often characterized his philosophical ideas. In exploring these apocryphal stories, we catch glimpses of the complex and enigmatic life of Jean Buridan. It is impossible to confirm their authenticity, but they offer a glimpse into the allure and intrigue that surrounded this iconic figure in the annals of philosophy. In the bustling town of Le Petit Andelys in medieval France, a philosopher named Jean Buridan pondered the mysteries of motion. This intellectual pursuit led him to question the prevailing wisdom of Aristotle, who believed that a body could only remain in motion if a continuous external force acted upon it. But Buridan dared to challenge this notion and proposed a revolutionary theory known as impetus. According to Buridan, motion was not simply sustained by external forces, but rather by a property inherent in the body itself. He named this property, impetus, a force that was imparted to an object when it was set in motion. Unlike Aristotle's view, Buridan argued that the impetus did not dissipate spontaneously but could be diminished by opposing forces such as air resistance and gravity. Imagine a skilled archer aiming for the target. As the archer releases the arrow, it is propelled forward by the impetus given to it by the archer's arm. The arrow continues to move as long as the impetus remains stronger than the resistance it encounters. Buridan believed that if there were no opposing forces, the arrow's motion could be infinite in duration. But how does impetus work? Buridan asserted that the strength of impetus depended on two factors, the speed with which the object was set in motion and the quantity of matter it possessed. To put it simply, the faster an object is launched and the more massive it is, the greater its impetus. This principle is akin to the modern concept of momentum. Buridan's theory of impetus has profound implications for our everyday lives. It reminds us that in our pursuits and aspirations, we must exert a forceful impetus to overcome obstacles and maintain momentum. Just like the archer's arrow, we must be aware of the opposing forces that can diminish or corrupt our impetus, such as self-doubt, external pressures, or distractions. By understanding the role impetus plays in our lives, we can strive to cultivate and protect our inner drive, ensuring that we continue to move forward towards our goals. In the annals of philosophical history, Jean Buridan's theory of impetus stands as a testament to the power of new ideas and the courage to challenge established beliefs. Through his insights, he opened up new avenues of understanding motion and left a lasting legacy that continues to inspire us in our daily lives. Do you want to explore more philosophers? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.